We're back in a Joburg. We will be racing at the Turf Dean. We're on the inside track for our Saturday meeting, which is a nine race program. No features to look forward to, but uh, just uh, hang on a uh, seven days and it will be a big feature race a meeting at a Turf Dean. Once again, that is the 27th of April. So do keep that date in mind. We are in the inside track. Our first race commences at uh, 12 uh, midday. And uh, don't forget, uh, you can get in touch with us via our X handle or our WhatsApp numbers. Please uh, do so. It is a long weekend of racing and of course, we can discuss racing from all around the country. Right, uh, before we go any further, let me welcome our two uh, expert analysts. On the line is Mr. Darren Burrows, and in studio is uh, Mr. Daryl Marie. They'll be helping us through. And it's a great point to start off uh, with our in-studio guest because our uh, telephonic guest has a selection for us, race number one. Right, Mr. Marie, a very, very good day to you. Um, you and Stratum, I think, have got a private line going <laughs> because what you said to me here, he repeated the next day and I says, have you? he says, no, 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 no. But uh, well found and a very good assessment of uh, what the thinking was. Yeah, we, that, that was a, a nice uh, win to get right, Cecil. But yesterday was disastrous with the ultra quick. Anyway, we're going to bounce back on Saturday. Um, you know, Queen of Love obviously uh, recorded a lovely debut. She is a two-year-old. She gets three and a half kilograms from her possible biggest rival in number one. Volare E Mamba, mm -hmm. who's obviously got the more experience, Cecil. Mm -hmm. And she did improve with the blinkers last time out. She finished well clear of the balance of the field. Um, I think she'll appreciate coming back in trip at this stage of her career. So although um, Queen of Love has got a lot more scope for improvement, I do have healthy respect for Volare E Mamba. And then number eight, the crown, encouraging debut, a little bit skeptical about that form line. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say one in 10 to fight it out. One in 10 to fight it out. And indeed, there was another horse from that form line who ran third. Okay, it was four and a half lengths behind the Zenobius Gold. Lucky's horse that did nothing at all on a Thursday, I think it was. All right, uh, Mr. Burrows, once again, a very good morning to you. And uh, let's hope that uh, the weekend is like our preceding weekend. You guys uh, fill our pockets. In race number one, you've got a selection for us. Yes, I do. Um, that is Queen of Love, number 10 on the card. Uh, that was a very good debut. She was closing the gap fast, the final 100 metres, behind Too Late My Mate, who was all the rage that day. And I just get the feeling this filly could be above average. And if that's the case, she's going to blow them away because Valari M. Mamba is very limited. Yes, she ran second to Donna Mo. That form line's been franked multiple times. But um, I get the feeling this filly could be above average. I'm going Queen of Love quite strongly at around five to two. Lovely stuff indeed. I actually spoke to the stable when the horse first came out and the Casey did say to me, what you see today, you can expect a big improvement next time out. And we saw a very good debut. That's race number one, win selection number 10, courtesy Darren Burrows. All right, so we're into race number two, which means a bipod time. There's some nice size fields. It looks very competitive. And uh, the inside track at Turvaline, we do know, does uh, need a little more consideration when you are making your selections. That draw, very important, especially in a race that, that's over the 1,600 meters. Right, as far as race at number two is concerned, we've got a couple of form updates from just uh, Thursday gone. Uh, Wednesday, I keep uh, getting used to the Tuesday, Wednesday ball. But it was Wednesday, and uh, the uh, two deception pass, one of a coupling from the Azzy stable, finished uh, second, and that was uh, behind uh, Mocha Trappe. That is uh, race uh, number two, and uh, Frappe, rather. And in the same race was uh, the six uh, Hermitage, who was the lesser fancied of the two, although did find the support. And uh, that uh, was the length behind in a third uh, to uh, the same uh, Mocha Frappe. All right, uh, Mr. Marie. As far as uh, race and number two is concerned, before we get to Mr. Burrows, we've got a two-to-one favourite. How long are we going to keep uh, persisting with Mastership? Has a draw of uh, six uh, this afternoon. It is uh, the regular pilot. In fact, it, they've changed the pilots. It is Gavin Larina, maybe just uh, New Blood, etc., etc., etc. But uh, I've been tipped this horse by insiders so many times. Yeah, that's the thing. He's let the side down on numerous occasions, Cecil, but uh, it does look like a great opportunity for him to get it right. Uh, probably in need of that comeback effort as a gelding. Finished well clear of the balance of the field. In that race, Cecil was Maka Frappe. Yeah. He was nearly close, to, well, just on eight lengths behind him. He's come out and franked the form. Um, his dam was an out and out sprinter. He tries the extra. Let's see how he goes. Um, but he has let me down in the past, so that's the reason why I haven't banked him. I backed him up with number eight of here, 
a bit of a roughy master TikTok. Um, I think this race is certainly going to be run to suit. He's going to push forward under Muzi Yeni, and I'm just going to put a line through his latest victory when he traveled down to KZN. Obviously, the 11 is the improver in the race. Um, what is it? Sakurajima. Sakurajima. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, let's see how he goes. And number 10, Master Forrester. I think he's crying out for this extra, but we know that Gavin Lorena probably had the opportunity of riding this, and he didn't. So, 1 and 8. One and eight for Mr. Marie will confirm the rest of the numbers in the bipod. For you, Mr. Burroughs, uh, Mastership, you know the ownership. Uh, what are their thoughts as far as uh, the uh, letting down so far? Yes, you know, they always said he was going to improve after the gelding. And um, it's just a question mark the mile. I don't know. The dam line's very speedy. So um, if he sees out the mile, um, he's probably the horse to beat. But I would like to see how he goes first. Deception pass really quickened up late. Yeah, uh, he hit a flat spot and then he sort of uh, made a late run at them. So the the miles probably going to suit him down to the ground. And the two year old Sakura Jima, I thought that was a good debut. He was running on. He was very green and he was beaten by a smart youngster in Legend of Arthur. So I've included one, two, and eleven. 1, 2 and 11 and in fact uh, looking back at that uh, Legend of Arthur form line I think the third horse was uh, still a few lengths uh, behind. No bankers in the bipod courtesy of Mr. Marie. The pool closes at 12.35 with the running of a racing today maiden plate. It's over the 1600 meters. We're on the inside track of Turf and Teen. Up next is the first leg of the PA. All right, so it is a race number three on the inside track of uh, Turfentine. And again, a reminder of our contact uh, details. There is that X handle at your disposal, as well as uh, the uh, WhatsApp numbers currently scrolling at the bottom of the screens. Let's get to race number three, the first leg of the PA, a field of uh, six. And it is a uh, staying trip, 2,600 meters for this for hospitality bookings. Phillies and Mayors, a 73 handicap. The uh, one, a place in the sun, does essay the uh, 2,600 meters for the very first time this afternoon. Eight Eight to ten. Two Gilda Gray is at five to two from an informed final Broncos to stay with the four Martinique is at nine to two. It is eight to one and a better bar those. Mr. Burroughs, a place in the sun. You're a man of pedigree, is a four year old daughter of a flower alley. The way it has been finishing off its races, maybe this is what the doctor ordered that uh, longer 2600 meters. Yes, I believe she'll stay all day this filly. I think she'll go 3,200 meters, uh, the man in which she races, because she comes off a bit early and she only gathers her stride late over 18. So um, surely she's going to see it out. If she doesn't, I'll be shocked. So I'm in a big way in a place, place of the sun, and I think uh, Gilda Gray will chase her home. Now, you are, Mr. Burroughs is a pedigrees man. You're the psychologist and you're the... <laughs> <laughs> right, 2,600 meters. Uh, place in the sun, do you have any reservations? I see you haven't got any bankers in that PA. No. The bipod, we saw no bankers. I will see the PA shortly. Uh, are you backing up at the uh, one, if you are going, or the one with what? Uh, with Martinique. And the only reason for that, Cecil, is because it's a small field and the pace could be very muddling. Um, you know, if they... If they crawl and try to turn it into a sprint, this filly is normally caught flat-footed. So that's my only reservation. I had a look at her breeding. Her grand dam actually produced juxtapose, who won the Oaks. Yes, yes. That so, was uh, for Mr. Ferreira and yes, Chase Mojan. Yes. So I think she's... Was it the Oaks or the Classic? She won both. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think uh, she'll certainly see it out. And we know that Striker, uh, when he teams up with ASSM... ASSM. Yeah. They, their strike rates from phenomenal. 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 Yeah. Uh, he's got about two months to go with the contract. Yeah. 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 Martinique's my backup. I don't know if you recall Muzi Yeni when he rode this filly, Cecil. To me, that was one of the ride of the, the years. Mm -hmm. uh, it was outstanding. And I think she is in receipts of six and a half kilograms. If she's up front with that pulling the weights, uh, slowing them up, she might just skip and uh, fend off the favorite. But I do have a preference for the one. One and uh, four, as far as that first leg of the PA is concerned, that is uh, race number three. It's over the 2,600 metres, the Phillies and Mayor 73, and that will be off at uh, 10 past one, and of course the four. That uh, beat uh, Darling Harbour has gone on uh, to do good things in both the Oaks trial and uh, the Oaks itself. Right, so let's talk about Darling Harbour, ran third in the Oaks trial, unfortunately pitted out. 
in of the Oaks itself, which was won so impressively by Francis Ethel. Right, we're going on to race number four. This is the first leg of the pick six. The Phillies are made at 72. They are going over the 1600, so we drop back in a trip off time at 13.45. And just having a look at the betting guide for race number four, we've got a mighty goddess in those very, very, very lucky souls of Mr. Pue is at 16 to 10. 72 is a recent maiden winner, number three, Springer. Gavin Six with his uh, winner last time out. Zenobius Gold also last time out winner, five to one. It is uh, eight to one and uh, better by those. I think with due respect, Mr. Marie, as far as uh, the recent maiden winners are concerned, they don't come through with uh, that resounding uh, reputation at the victories and the fields they beat. I think you alluded to Zenobius Gold's uh, victory wasn't the strongest and the most impressive uh, maiden field. Yes, so, so, but by now, maybe the crown has franked that form. We don't know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, she's one from one with the blinkers. I think she needs to up her game. Um, you know, this is a handicap and it's a not, not a strong field whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, track talk. They interviewed Fabian Habib, Habib in uh, Bush felt penultimate start and he actually cool. said this filly is better than her current rating mm -hmm. uh, willing to put a line through a later start the second run after rest i can't believe her price at 28 to 1 that comeback effort in open company wasn't a bad effort whatsoever and yes she's got 52 from a neat draw i think she will be competitive 28 to 1 is huge then you got solar diva uh, last time out right up there until the latter stages only petered out very late in that race, mm -hmm. um, has been plagued with bad draws. She cracks her draw now. Um, she'll be thereabouts. And number one, Mighty Goddess. I think stepping him back up to a mile, uh, we'll see improvement from her. Um, race wasn't run to suit last time out. She was caught wide. So I'm going the with the value of, yeah, number nine, Bushveld. Bushveld, value better for Mr. Marie. Now coming to you, Mr. Burrows, just a form update from last uh, Wednesday, the 7 free in Seattle. Finished 7th, and this was an Affiliates and Mayor 72 over the 1,500 metres, but only 3.20 lengths behind the Cuso Azul. That is over the 1,500. In a race number four, how would you say you'd play out at this fourth race? Um, I thought just about a field race. Um, Mighty Goddess obviously has the form. Uh, but her rating has gone up and she's got a big weight to shoulder. Um, I thought the improver has to be Canford Rose. You know, she won a maiden in good fashion. She came to the Cape, uh, flattened out behind Royals. Then she took on a feature race field, a gold poker game. That was quite strong. And last time out, never in it. Changes stable, Dennis Schwartz. Um, this could be the horse to beat if everything goes according to plan. But in saying that, she hasn't run for a couple of months, so might just need it. Um, others to consider, the recent maiden winners play with fire and Springer can get involved. Solo Divas got a chance and free in Seattle. Okay, so virtually a fielder for uh, Darren, as far as uh, Daryl's concerned, 169. And again, I don't think that is the most confident, just reading the body language. But uh, if you get through that, you've got a chance. Tab 10 events 0861 at triple of 0822 Merit Traded 70 is over the 1800 meters. So, quite a few lowly handicaps on Saturday, which adds to the spice of, uh, or at least the attraction of our exotics on the afternoon. This is the start of Jackpot 1. And a reminder, we've got those uh, contact details that uh, constantly scroll at the bottom of uh, the screen. Uh, that is our X handle and uh, our WhatsApp number. Now, let's have a look at uh, the betting for race uh, number five. And you've got the one uh, to the rescue, who's had that post-maiden runner behind a certain marauding horde at 9 to 2, co-favored with uh, the 7 had a scene. 5 to 1 is the 5, a uh, safe place, a local debutant formerly with uh, Timothy Pretorius in uh, the uh, KZN region. And then the four, Ryan's dream, my favorite horse, and Daryl's least favorite horse at 13 to 2. Right, uh, let's get to Mr. Burroughs first. In fact, let's start with Mr. Uh, Marie, because Mr. Burroughs is going to give us his uh, breakdown of the jackpot in detail. Ryan's dream, I thought, well, hang on, I was warned that if it wins, it's, uh, yeah, my, my life is virtually over, and it ran second. <laughs> but uh, would you give it a chance in this field? Yeah, what's the story with Muzi opting to take the ride on Royal Mazarin? I, I think know. him and Joey recently had a reunion after that two and a half years suspension by Joey. And uh, Royal Mazarin, I guess, uh, as far as uh, the uh, stamina, 1800 meter, I don't know. 
I yeah. would not know. But he's been writing Ryan's dream. So yeah. Safe space uh, says, so what can we say? It's now joined Tony Peters' yard. Let's see how he goes. Um, Copper John, better than his latest start. Um, he's He's been a bit of a disappointment, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him feature. Hollow scene, very fit. Uh, striker from a one draw. Course and distance suited. He should be thereabouts. But you know what? This horse to the rescue. Now, many will say that was, an, uh, was a bad effort last time. I don't know if you recall the race, Cecil. They walked up front. He was actually pulling terribly, terribly behind them, and then they turned it into a sprint, and this horse isn't a sprinter. He takes some time to unwind. On the inside track, although it's got a shorter run-in, they tend to go quicker, Cecil, and I promise you something. This horse will, uh, will win his races. I, I believe he's better than his current rating. I know he's got a hefty uh, weight to shoulder, but don't be surprised to see him feature. So I'm going to say the race uh, is lies between numbers 1, 5, 6 and 7. I've got a preference for 1 and 7. Okay, well, we'll discuss that form line behind Marauding Horde shortly when we get to another runner who was in that race. But let's get to our jackpot selector, and that is Mr. Burroughs. To the rescue, seemed to have a reputation, and then came back after gelding. Striker was aboard, and he did the job then, and then there was that run behind a Marauding Horde. As far as the jackpot is concerned, how are you going about this first leg, Mr. Burroughs? Um, I've played the safe route. I've gone just about the field. Um, to the rescue, he takes a long time to gather that stride. I mean, I think he's a horse looking for 2,600 plus um, in time to come. But if there's a decent speed on, he will do, be doing good late work at the finish. Um, others, Future Wolf, since he's joined the Heather, Heather Adamson stable, he's won uh, and placed third after that. So he's only had the two runs and the course and distance winner. So he should be right there. Ryan's dream was in need of that last run. He's run off the lights of Purple Pitcher, Donna Mo, good form. Uh, safe space, first run for the Peter Stable. He's got to come into the race with a chance. And then Copper John, uh, maybe the soft going got to him last time out because he didn't quicken up. And I think back on this course and distance, we'll see the best of Copper John. Holocene's got a chance too. Um, the value in the race, I thought Copper John. Copper John, the value in the race at around 17 and to 2. Part of that field a selection in first leg, also field leg 2. And it does uh, get a trimmer as we go through the third and the fourth legs. That's jackpot 1, off at 20 past 2. All right, so it is a field race as well in leg two of a jackpot one. This is a jackpot two commencing with a merit rate at 86 over the 1800 meters at www.tabforracing.com. And in race number six, favoritism is with a runner seeking at three wins on the bounce judgment day, 28 to 10. The three, Jordan, 15 to four, 13 to two, number one. Supreme Dance, the seven to one is about numbers of four, La Mohal, and the eight, uh, Officer in Command. It is 11 to one and a better bar those quoted runners. Up until uh, Wednesday, I was a bit sceptical about that uh, form line where Officer in Command beat the uh, winners and the likes of uh, Andy's Girl, Andy's Girl, a subsequent winner and a decent winner at that on a Wednesday at the Vol, Mr. Burroughs. Suddenly, uh, maybe Officer in Command is one to uh, give uh, utter respect to. Um, not for me today. Um, I thought, you know, this was Jordan. Yeah. And he's shown glimpses of real good ability. Uh, when he started off, his debut was a great one. He disappointed, then he won well. Um, he's run off Give Me a Shot and Marauding Horde in his last two starts. And um, I just get the feeling the penny's starting to drop with this horse. And um, this is the right type of company to see him get his confidence back. So, Jordan, a nice place bet. I wouldn't suggest an outright win bet but I still believe he's the horse to beat. The dangers would be Judgment Day, La Mujal, Supreme Dance and Silvana's song at the bottom of the weights. Supreme Dance, it could be a good week for a trainer, Brett Warren, after that a very good win by Green Flash. Uh, that was on a Wednesday and Green Flash does look a useful sort as well. Well done to you. <laughs> you fancied her chances. No, I wasn't fishing for compliments. Sir. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, Certainly wouldn't be surprised yeah. if Supreme Dance Diego features. knows all now. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm also leaning towards Jordan. I think he's going to get a great run in transits of ESS. So look who's drawn towards his inside. Yeah. Judgment Day. Now, from a one draw, Calvin's going to push forward. I'm sure um, Gavin will just take a seat behind him and hopefully he can tow him through into um, the final 400. And we'll see um, Gavin slipstream him and uh, possibly run on bar. Um, Mr. Terry has always said the son of Silvana is better than his current rating. And he will get him better with racing. He's now having his peak run. So Vano's generally improve as they go by or as uh, they, they get on with it. Um, yeah, so I like uh, I like Jordan's chances over here, but I'm not putting a line through officing command. Now last time I t he was a maiden in a handicap company. He led from start to finish. Muzi is probably going to adopt similar tactics. Um, he wasn't stopping, he actually came back at Andy's goal and was extending at the finish. Um, so yeah, uh, three and eight, my top two choices. Okay, see there a play selection from Mr. Burrows at the three. He's also got a jackpot for us in a race at number six, starting in race number six. That is not just the place, but my apologies, just the place, but my apologies to all concerned. So that is a Jordan, a good place, bet is his words are for race six. All right, so we get into a very, very nice uh, top-rated, uh, merit-rated 96 race on the card. It's over the 14 of 50. This is race seven. A last chance to get involved in a pick today. And yes, we've guessed it. We've got a pick three selection coming through from yours truly. But in race number seven, the favorite is a brave, of, a champion warrior, rather. And that is at 14 to 10. The two money highs, 11 to 2. Mardi Gras, 7 to 1. Brave Viking, 8 to 1. 10 to 1. And uh, better bar those quote run as well represented are the ownership of uh, both uh, the uh, 2 and the 11. Well, the uh, first name is having a first run on the high fold uh, since uh, relocating to the Tony Peters stable. It has been up here before when uh, Gareth Van Sale used uh, to have a satellite yard here. Now, let's uh, hear about uh, the uh, more fancied uh, number 11 champion or warrior, Mr. Marie. Um, Cecil, if you told me a couple of months ago this horse is only going to be a two-time winner, I would have, I would have taken any bet with you what you wanted. Uh, he really looked to be going through the divisions after uh, being unbeaten in his first two starts. So he has been a disappointment, but his last couple of runs on the half felt have been encouraging, especially off his current rating. Drawn to 54 to shoulder. I think uh, the 1450 will suit him because in a mile last time out, it looked like he was going to get it right and uh, Warhawk Bomber came back at him. So he is certainly the horse to beat up here. But, um, you know, he he was with the Tony Peter yard, but he never raced with Tony. I recall that. Yeah, so nah, he's, his biggest danger is trained by Tony Peter and that's money heist. This horse has come down in the ratings. Um, if he's improved since joining the yard on the high felt, and that means he's better, better than his current rating and he will be competitive. So 2 and 11 to fight it out. Okay, 2 and 11. Not so long ago, Mr. Burrows, we were talking up a brave Viking uh, to really be headed uh, for some uh, very good stuff. And uh, certainly everything was uh, in uh, on paper looked to be uh, just about right. Yes, you know, um, he could be coming back to his best again. You know, he ran fourth in the Grand Heritage. Then the stable hit a bit of a dip. And um, slowly coming back to form now are the Soma runners. And he ran four lengths behind midwinter when last come out. The concern is the 10 draw, and we don't know if he's going to get in. Emporium's another runner that uh, having a second run back, he might just need one more to tighten up. So my first choices are going to be Champion Warrior. Um, he's on his way back to best. He was beaten under a length by midwinter wind. I thought the mile last time I could have caught him out. And I think the 1400 is a perfect trip, handy galloping weight, good draw. Um, he should get it right this time around. His danger is money heist, but he might just need one run back. Okay, so now as far as your pick three is concerned, we're going to have a look at that pick three. You've gone the uh, two and 11 champion warrior, backed up by the aforementioned uh, money heist, the 278 uh, leg two. And then a race and number nine to round it all off, two, six, seven, and 11. Please get that uh, pick three on by 15 at 30. That is a merit rate at 96, certainly one of the highlights of the afternoon. 
Okay, as we now go into the first leg of the last possible double at a turf in on a Saturday, a reminder of our contact details. It is uh, X via uh, Twitter, uh, formerly Twitter rather, or you can contact us uh, via our uh, WhatsApp and numbers. Now, race number eight, uh, we are in another very useful race. Uh, Phillies and Mares 92, we're over the thousand meters. And there is a form update, a couple of form updates. So five, a uh, law of success behind a green flash, finished a seventh and that was four lengths behind. And further back in a Length further back was uh, number nine, Heirloom, although ninth, only five lengths behind a green flash. Favoritism is with the seven Amber Rock looking to make it a uh, uh, quick double, 22 to 10. Number two, I Star, five to two. Six to one about number eight, Woman of Fame. Five, Law of Success, seven to one. Exchange Student Day to one, it is 17 to two and uh, better bar those quote runners. Amber Rock uh, back to winning ways last time out uh, with the uh, Muzi aboard. What do you think of uh, the uh, chances in what is a uh, race filled with the uh, hard knockers, Mr. Burrows? Well, Amber Rock, you know, I went for her in her penultimate start when she just faded out of contention behind Cosmic Star and she bounced right back last time out. It wasn't a strong field. Kenshin Shah didn't quite frank the form, um, but she won well and she's only a three year old. I'm hoping that she can progress because she's got the draw in her favor and the weight. Uh, Ice Star, very consistent. She ran a good second behind time for Orchids. Uh, she did receive eight kilos that day, and she did, did look the second best horse in the race, but she will be right there. If you like Ice Star, don't exclude Exchange Student. Now, this filly last year, she rested from April to October, came back and won beating Ice Star at 40 to 1, uh, not much weight reversal. And then she came to the Western Cape and she was beaten seven lengths by the Abdicator in a very strong Class 3 race. If she's not in need of the run, she could be the upset uh, package here. So 2, 3 and 7 I've played. 2, 3 and 7 will confirm those numbers as shortly as far as uh, the exact suggestion from uh, Mr. Burrows. Uh, your uh, word as far as the race number 8 is concerned. Rani of Kitur. I'm not saying he's got a chance, but it uh, comes off obviously what was uh, some sort of a medical type uh, a layoff. But I'm sure we will see the source uh, get better with more runs. <laughs> Absolutely, so so. Um, yeah, whatever I pose against you, uh, you, <laughs> you proved me wrong. So I'm certainly not going to. No, 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 no. <laughs> but yes, so I like the look of number eight of yeah, Woman of Fame. Yes. Now, last time out of the 1200 on a softish track. She was pulling terribly, and I said, next time, if they happen to get a nice race on the inside track over mm. a thousand meters, that's going to suit her down to the T. And we saw that with Richard Free in her penultimate start. Yeah. It was a very smooth, comfortable victory. At the 400, she was already climbing over Love Grass. So I think if she can just slot in behind Amber Rock and settle in running, I think she is going to be a player over here. So number eight's my topic. I've got respect for Amber Rock. You can see in her penultimate start. Or three runs back, she actually holds our star. She beat her and she's better off at the weight. But that doesn't mean I'm discounting our star's chances. She's ultra consistent. So for me, eight, my topic, respect for three and seven. Okay, so uh, very much the same sort of a thought process between the uh, two tipsters that the eight are not included by Mr. Burrows. He's gone two, three, seven exchange student as the uh, one or two boost that exact dividend. That's enough time off a 1605 to race number eight. Okay, so we round off our meeting with the race number nine, and it is the next th turpentine race meeting, Thursday, the 25th of April, and that is a merit rate 80 over the 1200. So it uh, does uh, state the fact that on the Thursday we race at a turpentine, and a Saturday we've got that feature race day to round off our uh, high felt season before moving down to the coast. Right, uh, race number nine. This is off at uh, 20 minutes to five. It's over the 1200 meters. Sean Terry's Turbo Power, that is your favorite. At at 22 to 10, number six, False Duty, and the seven, Munchkin, both at four to one. 13 to two is the eight, Circus Lights. Three, Bob, eight to one, 14s, and a better bar those. So the draw, as uh, we've stated uh, throughout this uh, preview, is a big, big factor on the inside track. In a race, and uh, number nine, Mr. Uh, Marie, how are you playing it? Cesar, I think um, Turbo Powell must be respected. He's going to be my first choice. Um, he's been ultra consistent with those blinkers on um, that form line we've seen being franked with dreamland mm -hmm. winning again 
and green flash. Mm -hmm. Also Frank in that form. Yeah. The pace is going to be on, on the inside track. He's won around the bend before, albeit the Vol Classic. Uh, if he can just be midfield, I'm sure he's capable of picking them off in the straight. Um, yes, Fast Duty and Munchkin finished alongside each other on the Volvo Vegas run. Uh, both have to be considered. If you're playing trifectas and quartets, please include number 11, Kalida. Now, I don't know his well-being. He's returning from a, a short break, uh, but he has been gelded. And he's only got 54 to shoulder. If he's improved with the gelding, Cecil, we can see him put a line through. Well, you can put a line through his most recent efforts. Let's see how he goes. I, like I say, I don't know where he is in his preparation. Okay, so that is uh, 11 Kalida that uh, could come back after gelding and a feature on uh, return to track. Mr. Burrows, last word uh, to you. And again, we need uh, your numbers for this uh, ninth and final race. Turbo Power stands out. Uh, last uh, run, as uh, Mr. Maria points out, has been uh, franked not once but a couple of times. How are we going about race nine? Well, Cecil, um, I just want to give my advice to um, the trainer and owner of Munchkin. I know they've tried just about everything to get this horse back to best. My only um, advice I could give is trying to drop this horse in future to a thousand meters because he travels strongly and he doesn't quite round his races off. And maybe a thousand meters will be his um, distance where he can actually find his best form again. But in today's race, I do believe he's a big runner. He's got the draw. Um, this course he's suited to. Um, he's got everything in his favor to run a big race. But I'm still favoring Turbo Power. As long as he's not too far out of his ground, he can drop back through the field and come with a late run. Um, I've suggested the exact box Turbo Power and Munchkin. But in future, I would like to see Munchkin over a thousand meters. Well, this will be a barometer as uh, to whether Lucky is a fan of the show or not, because he will definitely come up to me and uh, say I took the advice on board. If he's in a good mood, if he's in a bad mood, he will <laughs> otherwise state. <laughs> but I will, <laughs> I will pass it on, Mr. Burrows. That is the uh, two and seven boxed exactors, Munchkin. That is uh, the big opponent to the favorite number two, Turbo Power.